In the last video in this series, I showed you how to access R2 storage from a worker. You can find the link below in the description box or directly on the screen if you haven't watched it yet. In this video, we'll take a closer look at the S3 API compatibility with R2. This implementation allows users and their applications to migrate seamlessly while still maintaining full compatibility with the S3 API. Cloudflare R2's implementation is designed to be fully compatible, meaning that users can use the same API calls and tools that they are already familiar with. This makes it seamless for users to move their existing applications and data to R2 without significant changes to their code base. Although R2's implementation of the S3 API aims to be fully compatible, specifically some features of certain API operations like get bucket, life circle or put bucket tagging are not currently compatible with R2. To see a complete list of API operations that are supported and the ones that are not supported by R2, please refer to the documentation page. Now let's take a look at an example of how to configure the AWS SDK JavaScript library to work with R2. To get started, you need to generate an access key. You do that in your R2 dashboard where you see the create API token button. We'll be setting the permission to edit here and leaving the TTL as custom. Once that is done, click the create API token button and this will generate an access key ID and a secret access key. This is only available to you once, so make sure you copy it and save it aside. For this example, we'll be using the AWS SDK S3 library. I've gone ahead to install that with npm. So what I'm doing here is importing it into this file. The next thing I'll do is to initialize the library by calling the new S3 client command. In here, I'm going to pass in a few things. I'm passing in the region, which I'm setting to auto. I'm going to also pass in endpoints. Here, we'll be using the R2 URL that you get from your dashboard. This is customized as your account ID in your URL, right? So make sure that you copy your account ID and set it aside. And then you have a credentials object where we will pass in the access key ID and the secret access key. All of this I already added to an environment file here, so I'm not directly passing in the values, but they are already stored in a .env file. I'll also go ahead and then import .env into this file so that we are able to use it. Once we have that set up, I'll go ahead and create the next bucket operation. Here, I want to be able to create a new bucket in my R2 dashboard using the S3 API. So what I'm doing here is I've created a create bucket function and just log in directly to the console, the bucket's name. I'm also going to be using the create bucket command API from S3 to create the bucket. And you need to pass in a parameter here, which is the bucket's name. Next, I have a try catch method that checks if a response is being returned. If that's the case, I'm also going to be logging a response to the console. And for the response, I just want to get the exact location that the bucket was created and return that in my console.log statement. Otherwise, check if the bucket already exists. If it does, I want to return an error message and finally check if the bucket actually doesn't is not created and then return an error message for that. So trying to catch every case that could occur in this bucket operation. Next to that, I'll create a main function where I'll be handling all the other functions that I've created. Here, I'll pass in bucket's name and set the bucket's name to a string value that I would like to assign to my bucket. And following that, call the create bucket function and passing the bucket's name directly here. And then export the function using module.exports. 
I'd like to add one more operation to our bucket, which is a upload file operation. Essentially, what this would do is upload a file as an object to the already existing bucket that we've created. So here I'm creating an upload file function, passing a few parameters to that. I'm also logging a statement to the console. And for this specific function, I'm going to be using the S3 API for creating an object in your bucket, which is called put object command, right? So I'm using that API here. And for that, I'll need to pass in a few parameters, including the bucket name, a key, which is the name of the file, and then also the body, which is the content of the file. Once that's done, I have a try cat statement as well, where I'm just returning a response to the console for this specific response. I want to return the name of the file that was created and also the e tag that's also assigned to the file. If that's successful, this is locked to the console. If there's an error, this try cat statement is going to catch it and return an error statement. In the main function, I'm going to call upload file and also passing the parameters that it's expecting. It's expecting the bucket name, the name of the file that I'd like to create and the content of the file, right? And finally export that as well so that we have everything working as expected. Now I've gone ahead to run the file and as you can see in my arrow to dashboard, I have a bucket called S3 demo bucket and also the file was also created inside of the bucket. Cloudflare's R2 implementation of the S3 API provides users with a powerful and flexible way to store, retrieve and manage data in the cloud. Whether you're starting off a new project or you're looking to migrate your assets from an S3 compatible service, Cloudflare R2 offers you the performance, reliability, and security that you need. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one.